Sprasnikom, happy feast day. Sprasnikom. Our Lord enters into Jerusalem today in triumph. Not in the triumph of a worldly kingdom. We see today before us an opportunity to see where our allegiance is. Is our allegiance with the world or is our allegiance with God? Where will we follow Christ this week? Will we follow him to the crucifixion, to the tomb, and to the resurrection? Or will we be the ones that say, crucify him, crucify him? As we all wave our branches today, much as the people did in Jerusalem, and cry, Hosanna, you have to realize this, this word, which means to save, can be used in two senses by the people. There were those who perhaps somewhat understood, not fully, certainly yet, who this man was, and cried Hosanna, and wanted salvation, real salvation, the life in Christ. And there were those who thought he was coming to establish his earthly rule, to take over Jerusalem, to take over the Romans, and to be in charge. And of course, after he had raised up Lazarus from the dead, many had had enough. This is not what we wanted. You have to kill Lazarus as well. There were others who were elated. This is the one we wanted, who has come to conquer death, not to conquer the Romans, but to conquer death, to conquer death, to sin, to conquer the devil. And as he comes in, he doesn't come on a great stallion or anything with an entourage of that sort. He comes on a lowly donkey, the foal of an ass, and rides in that way. This is what a servant would have done, somebody that was humble would have done. The prophecy is being fulfilled. And he comes into Jerusalem in this manner, in humility, going to receive his crown indeed as king, but not a crown with jewels, not a precious diadem, but a crown of thorns is the crown that he is going to receive. It's a quite different thing, a quite, quite different thing. He knows he's going to suffer, but he sets his face toward it anyway, with profound humility in everything that he's doing, in every action that he is taking. If you will but follow him this week, through this Passion Week, through the services, if possible, and if not, to read the readings that we have, you will see how profound it is what was going on here. There was many tangential things going on around him. Of course, people preparing for the Passover, the celebrations, the excitement of what was going on all around him, people in the temple. And yet he continued to teach them, loving them, showing them his kindness, offering them words of hope, offering them words of instruction, but still focused on one primary thing, his primary purpose for coming there, to be crucified. We have to look at him and say, is this the way we want? Are we going to be the ones that say, Hosanna, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Or are we going to be the ones that say, in a few days, have changed our minds, and all the excitement say, crucify him, crucify him. St. Theophon the Recluse, in one of his reflections on this, says, indeed, that is often us, more often than not, because we come to church, we prepare, we receive the holy mysteries, we are elated, perhaps saying Hosanna. But by the time we walk out of the door, not even four days, we're saying crucify him, crucify him. And he says, why is it that we're doing that? Because we're gossiping, because we're angry, because we're blabbering about mindlessness, because we're making foolish jokes, spilling out the grace, as Bishop Mctari of Seattle used to say, that had been given to our hearts, instead of preserving that precious candle in our hearts. It can blow out so easily. It can also be inflamed to a great conflagration. So we must see what it is we want. And the epistle today, knowing what is coming before us, may seem ironic, but indeed it is not. I know Father Shemaman used to talk about how much he loved this particular verse being read today, because what does it say? Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice, knowing what is coming forward. To let our faith be known by our different translations, meekness, kind, gentleness, the Russian seems to imply. Is that how we make ourselves known, by our meekness? 
by our humility. That is the way the Lord made himself known. Or do we seek to be seen as the great king coming into the town? And then he says, he gives a great instruction, St. Paul, on how it is we are to emulate the king, how it is we are to accept what he has done, how we are to accept the crucifixion which he constantly offers to us, the amazing offering. But he says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble or honest, depending on the translation, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, if there be any virtue or anything worthy of praise, to meditate on these things, are those the things that we meditate on, or the contrary? We fill our hearts each and every day, it's almost impossible not to. The music around us, the sounds around us, the things that are on pictures around us, the videos around us, really aren't usually true, noble, just, pure, lovely, worthy of praise. So we need to be filling our hearts with those things. When we walk out of the door, immediately begin filling our hearts with that meditation, to flame up, to blow on that candle with the air that it needs to burn more, but not so much that it burns it out. The wrong kind of air. To breathe in holiness, to breathe in virtue. And we would live that kind of life, which by the world's standards, doesn't sound very fun to use the word for the world. Our flame will blow out, and we begin to crucify him again. That's really not what we want. We thought this man who was doing all these miracles and was really doing it in the face of the Romans and doing it in the face of the leaders we didn't like was going to offer us something we really liked. He was going to give us the kind of change we wanted to change the world. Perhaps like what we think we see in current political leaders, but it aren't going to give us any of that. Only God, trust you not in princes and the sons of men, but trust in God. And what God continually offers is a cross. Take up my, your cross and follow me. And it seems hard in the, way, in the eyes of the world to do these things that Paul told us to meditate on, but indeed, he gives our hearts freedom, true freedom from our passions, from our lusts, from our temptations, from our addictions. And gives us likeness. Indeed, it brings light, not just by weight, but by sight. It lightens our bodies, it lightens our hearts, it lightens our minds. But no matter what is thrown at us, we can embrace it, we can accept it, we can endure it. And nothing can conquer us because we are filled up with Christ. So we have a choice to make our allegiance known. Do we want to say Hosanna even at the cross? To be as the centurion say, truly this man was the Son of God? Or do we want to say, if you are the Son of God, come down and save yourself? Offering him up vinegar and a spear which is what we do by our sins each and every day, by turning away from him. He desires to give us everything, to give us the kingdom, to give us joy, to give us peace, to give us light, to give us patience, to give us hope, to give us all things that are good, where nothing can weigh us down because we know that everything is from the will of God, at least allowed by God, and fills us up with his peace. Or do we like the ways of the world too much? Brothers and sisters, that is nothing but false hope. It is never going to fill us up. It is never going to give us joy. It is never going to give us true peace. And whatever any political leader in the universe, no matter what persuasion promises us, they're not going to fix us. They're not. They can't. They don't have what is necessary to do so. Only Christ has that power. Remember when someone was worried about the political situation in the world, which these early Hebrews were, the older Paisios told them, there is a God. Instead of turning to things that aren't going to bring us joy, pray. Meditate on those pure and lovely and just and noble and true things. Don't crucify Him when you walk out the door. 
and do everything you can to be as that martyr that's down in the tunnels and the catacombs. Perhaps the day she knows she's going to be beheaded, but she knows that some secret Christians are perhaps going to offer her the Holy Eucharist that day. And the only way she can get to it is to go through the tunnels. Archbishop Andre gives this story. And to get through those tunnels in that morning, she has to keep that candle lit, representing her heart, obviously. And if she makes wrong moves and is not delicate with her way of life, really symbolizing her keeping the virtues and keeping the commandments, that candle gets snuffed right out and she doesn't get the object of her desire. She's martyred without her Eucharist, without her Holy Communion. Not with everything she wanted. To keep the flame alive, cry Hosanna, rejoice in the Lord always, even in the darkest trials be able to rejoice because God is with us. One more aside that came to mind when I said that. Father Roman Braga, the famous Romanian confessor who just died last year, was a spiritual father of a spiritual father of mine. Father Roman talked about when he was in the Patesh death camps, and I know you've heard me say this, but it's worth repeating, that when they kept him amongst the populace and everybody was manipulating each other constantly, he, all he found was Satan. He truly saw the power of Satan. But when they put him into solitary confinement and they took away everything he had, every book, every consolation, anything that he had liked in the world, they thought they would break him. So he had one choice. It was to flame, to add flames to his fire in his heart that was already there by praying, by praying, by praying, and praying for the world. He said in solitary confinement, when that's all he had, he found Christ, the living God. He became not just a man of books, but a man of true belief and followed Christ. This day, begin to make your allegiance known who it will be to, the way of the world, or to the king that comes riding on a donkey to receive a crown of thorns, to be crucified, but ultimately to rise in glory, to be clothed in the robe of righteousness and eternal light. He is the one this day we must rejoice in. Amen. Amen.